Hello, my loves. Your favorite fabulous fairy here, and today I wanted to tell you a little story about our trip to the Flamingo in Vegas, Nevada. We were so haunted. First off, let me just say I absolutely love Vegas. I love everything about Vegas. It, I don't know that I could live there because it's like a Disneyland to me, but I, if I think about vacation, I think let's go to Vegas. And no, I'm not an extreme gambler. I love all the museums. I love the culture. I love the ghosts. I love the shows. I love the food. I love walking around at all hours of the night and things are open. One of the things I really love about going to Vegas is staying at different hotels every time, trying out something new, seeing how the other side lives, seeing what is the highlight, what's the low light. You know, there are some crazy things. I've stayed everywhere from like Circus Circus to, you know, I mean, all the way up to what Caesar's Palace. I'm sure there's ones on the strip that I need to see that are just even crazier than that. But there's been some really cool stuff that I've seen. On this trip, we decided to stay at the Flamingo, and I was really excited. We usually go with my Uncle Brent to Vegas because my Uncle Brent does Vegas up. He knows how to gamble, he knows where the good shows are, he knows where the good food is, and he knows where the, the other kind of fun and entertainment also is. I absolutely loved our room. Me and my husband were getting ready for bed one night, and we were laying in bed, and all of a sudden, our door to our bathroom slides open. And this is one of those doors that slides this way. And all of a sudden it slides all the way open like a pocket door. And we stop and we look at each other and we are just about to say something. And all of a sudden it slides back and it closes. I wasn't too freaked out about it. I was more like, that's neat. You know, did you see that? And he was like, yeah, that was really cool. So fast forward to that night, um, I have to go pee. So I'm sitting on the toilet and I'm doing my business and I noticed that the shower curtain to the, to the shower is like lifted up kind of like, it's almost like somebody grabbed a big old bunch of it and suspended it in the air. Like, I don't know, three, four feet in the air. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, there's something not right about that. That shower curtain shouldn't be lifted up like that because it has those little weights that are sewn into the bottom of it. So I'm thinking, why did Robbie tuck it up into the handle? Cause there is the handle where the door slides. And I'm thinking, why did he do that? And just as I'm thinking that it drops as if somebody's hand just let it go. And all of a sudden the shower curtain falls and and it kind of sways a little bit and then quickly stops because of the weights and I'm like what the heck was that so the next day I decide I'm gonna freshen up I'm in the shower I'm taking my little shower and I think I see a shadow walk into the bathroom so I'm thinking well it's the only other person that's in this room with me is my husband so it must be my husband so I say my love and I look up because I'm basically like doing the part where I don't know why they do this, but while you're washing your hair, that's when a ghost wants to get in your face. They always want to wait till your eyes are closed and there's soap in your face. And then that's when those little guys want to pop and be like, Hey, what you doing? Because it's like the most iconically creepy, vulnerable moment, but whatever, this is what happens. So I've got my hair. I'm, you know, I kind of see like, you know, when you, something passes in front of your eyes and it gets darker, I kind of see that. So I kind of peek out and I see a little shadow go by and I'm thinking it's my husband. So I say, my King, my love, is that you? what are you doing well from the bedroom he says yes my queen and I'm like opening one eye looking around because he's saying something from the other freaking room meanwhile I'm seeing this shadow in front of me I look up the shadow is still there and it isn't a very tall man this is a kind of short man wearing a hat that kind of dips in at the top and it's got a brim to it and he looks like he's wearing kind of a you know kind of a square shouldered suit and he just is standing there. I see the silhouette of this man standing there and it, the head in the shadow turns to look at me like at my direction. And I, again, I'm seeing like the shadow behind the curtain, the same as if, you know, you see something like this. That's like what I was seeing, you know? So I see that the shadow and he kind of like turns to look at me, except it's more defined because you can see the hat and everything. So I am like tripping out and I rinse the hair, the, my stuff off my face, get my hair out of my way open my eyes, pull back the curtain. There is nobody there. Of course there's nobody there. Later that evening, my husband and I decided to go to the speakeasy at the Mob Museum. And we're like, okay, this is gonna be fun. So we dress up, we go down, we have our little drinks, which I highly suggest if you've not gone to the Mob Museum, please go check it out. Check out the little speakeasy. Even if you're not like really big into drinking, it's fun to go get the drink and just like have the experience. They like sneak it to you in a book and stuff like that. It's really cool. Anyway, so we're down there and then we go up and we look at the Mob Museum and I noticed something right away that the person that I saw, their silhouette 100% matches up with Bugsy Seagull. I'm not joking. 
the rest of the trip that we had was wonderful. There was little instances here and there. There was like things would move. You'd hear something. The bathroom door opening and closing, that was the entire time we were there. There was once when we caught a glimpse of somebody walking like next to our mirror. We had this like floor to ceiling length mirror and you could see a shadow passing in front of it. Like somebody just walked down the little hallway, but we were, we were not walking. So we're thinking, what is all of this? A hundred percent, I believe Bugsy Seagull checked in on us. Um, I did give some money to a few different homeless people while we were there, none of which had asked me for it. They were just kind of hiding out in their little spot. And each time I did, they like were looking at me all knowingly, like they expected me to walk up even though they couldn't see me. And we were so blessed. We won a bunch of money the whole time we were there. We got kept getting like free this and that. And it was one of the best trips I had ever been. And I couldn't help think that Bugsy Seagull had blessed us. That's it for this story. If you like this, please like, share, subscribe. DM me. Do you like this kind of content? I do all sorts of things. I talk about magic. I talk about art, beauty, nature, ghosts, you name it. It comes up. It's here. I do so many DIYs. It's not even funny. If you want to check out more of that, go see me on Instagram, The Fairy Shana. I know I shouldn't be diverging you from here to there, but I'm on Instagram every single day. So if you're enjoying all this, go hit me up over there. Um, please comment below if this is like worth your time and you're liking it. And if you ever get a chance to go stay in Vegas, I highly suggest go check out the Flamingo. It's rich, full of history. It's got a cool vibe and you might even get to meet Bugsy Seagull.